Hello folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and for the last eight days I was at a hotel uh, for a business trip I was on and they had a bunch of airplanes out back. You can see me right there with my Ludlum uh, Model 12 with a 44-2 1 inch sodium iodide scintillator and my Polymaster. I was over there checking out the airplanes because they were cool and I was having somebody take a photograph because I thought it would kind of look cool, you know, me checking the airplanes. Just kind of a gag photo of sorts. And then all of a sudden I stumbled across something hot. Right there, these are just model. oh, they're not models, they're real airplanes, that's an A4 Skyhawk, but they're on display like in a museum. Here's the object I found, and I don't know what was in the object, but I took a spectrum of it, and I wanted you to take a look at it, but before I just show the spectrum, let me show you the video of what I actually found when I was doing it. Sorry for getting the strap in the video caught in the way, but um, anyway, here's what happened. All right, so I'm in front of an aircraft, and you see we're at a background of 2,000 counts per minute, and this is in the times 10 mode, right? Now look up here. Look underneath here. There's a thing. If I go up near it, the readings go up. Now look down at the screen, and it's hard over. Switch to times, let's move away from it, switch to times 100. Quickly reset the meter. And now watch the meter as I put this near it. Um, okay, or watch the strap. Watch the meter as I put this near it. What it is, I don't know. But it's at nearly 20,000 counts per minute, 18,000 counts per minute in the scintillator. And it. Oh, shit, there it is. It's up there. I was in the wrong spot. It's right here, whatever it is. Oh, crap, it's off the roof there. Okay, times 1,000 mode. It is 100,000 counts per minute. It's 100,000 counts per minute in front of a Skyhawk. Well, that's the hottest radioactive thing I've found in a long time. All right, so here's the actual spectrum I took. Now, I, the, we, we had been working really hard during this uh, uh, trip for eight straight days. Um, lots of systems had to be messed with and everything. So basically, put we had almost no time. We had to get the heck out of there because we were running out of time. And we had a long trip ahead of us. So I only had a couple minutes in front of this, the, these airplanes. It really sucked. I wish I had known they were there. I would have gone out in the middle of the night from the hotel and actually checked them. So next time I go there, I'll double check. But I had like two or three minutes. So I ran up and I got a, 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 took my Polymaster off and took a quick spectrum of this 100,000 count per minute thing. But keep in mind, 100,000 counts per minute is a lot, but that was on a scintillator, by the way, too, which gets a 2,000 count per minute background to begin with. So it's still hot, don't get me wrong. That's a, that's, that's, that's a pretty good gamma dose coming off of this thing. Uh, the Polymaster said that it was somewhere between 5 and 10 microsieverts per hour at contact, but then it was fluctuating. I didn't have time to stabilize it. So let's call it maybe 6 or 7. We wouldn't know unless I actually left the unit there for a few minutes. Now, <clears throat> if you'll see here at the spectrum, this is only a two or three minute spectrum. I did not have much time. Uh, I got a, a pretty good amount right here, around, oh, this is 80 to 90 kV. You got some little nuggets right here at 176, 162 kV, 31 kV, some stuff down here that looks, reminds you a little bit of uranium, maybe. It's a little bit. And then I got these two guys right here. These are actually pretty big ones. If you switch to logarithmic view, you can see that these two are the major, uh, the, are the major uh, peaks, actually, the major photo peaks. Now, uh, I've actually spent a little bit of time and looked at this in detail. This guy right here that you're seeing, uh, it was at approximately 1,005.34 keV. And that's very close to protactinium 234M, which is at 1,001. 0 0.03, so that's only off by like 3 or 4 keV. This guy right here is at 767.75, I get right in the middle of it, somewhere in there, 767. If This is, by the way, not just right where I put the mouse, I'm taking the entire region of interest, this whole ROI here, and calculating it centroid, so I'm doing this a little bit more mathematically than just double-clicking it like you see right now. And that's very close to 766.36, again, from protactinium 234M. Now, anything that produces protactinium 234M would be uh, something from the uranium 238 decay chain. And so you get uranium 230K, the 238 
then you would get thorium-234, protactinium-234, and uranium-234, that sort of thing. And so what we should be seeing, if this is what this is, and I'm going to tell you what I think it is in just a minute, uh, and I'll tell you right now, actually, depleted uranium, if we see chemically pure two th uranium-238 that has been decaying over time, we would expect to see some activity from thorium-234, which is pretty potent. A little guide there, and that should be around 63.29 keV and 92.38, 98.8. And you notice right up here, we're pretty much right on those 92 keV ranges. The 60 is dropping, but my efficiency for my detector drops right here too, so that's almost one that has to be scratched. So we have three indicators for thorium-234 and protactinium-234M. That's not an absolute perfect... Uh, um, identification. God, I wish I'd had time. I had my gamma spectacular in my uh, suitcase and I had a sodium iodide probe. If I have any chance to, I'm going to go back and test this again and get a, you know, like for an hour and get a good, uh, really good reading of what it is. Um, somebody told me it could have been Thor, uh, 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 what was it called? Um, Magthor, which is apparently a metal uh, made of magnesium and thorium that's used a lot of times in airplanes, but I don't think so because you don't see any other thorium activity. I've looked at these other peaks down here, and they appear to be somewhere around like 162 keV, 176, 231 keV, 307, 355. Some of that looks a little like uranium, some of it doesn't. Some of it could be just coming out of the background because, you know, it's sitting on top of asphalt, which is always pretty uranium thick. And you'd think you'd see something around 509, uh, 609. And, you know, there is a little bit of a buildup here. It's hard to say if that's one buildup build up from one full peak or if it's a bunch of little ones put together. I mean, right here it builds up. But the only two active ones I see here look like they're protactinium 234M, which is a metastable isomer, by the way. It means that it's super excited and it will drop down to protactinium 234 in a short time, and it does. It has the protactinium has a half-life of only, uh, what is it, 70.2 seconds. So you might be saying if it has such a short half-life, how can it be there? Well, it's, con it's continuously. It's continuously being produced by... Um, is a, decay, is a decay product of thorium-234 via beta decay. Now, it only has a half-life of 24.1 days. So again, you'll say, well, that's neat, Tom, but where the hell is that coming from? Well, that would be coming from uranium-238, which has a 4.5 billion year half-life. And you'd be inter entering into something known as secular equilibrium. Basically, these two guys would be in equilibrium with one another. Their half-lives appearing to be similar to the uranium-238's half-life, only because they're being produced at about the same rate as the uranium-238 is. You see, they have a short half-life, but they're only being produced at a short rate. So it gets kind of uh, amusing. And you need something called a Bateman equation, which I've mentioned like 50 times, and I should probably show everybody how to solve one of those um, if you want to figure this out. But pretty much, I'm going to call this depleted uranium, very pu chemically pure depleted uranium. And there's many applications for depleted uranium in airplanes. Um, it's uh, used for things like weighting, because it's really, really heavy. It can be used for shielding and some other stuff too. Um, and there's probably other uses that it has that I don't even know about because you know I'm not a I'm not a airplane uh, you know mechanic or whatnot. I'm not an engineer of aeronautics that sort of thing. But anyhow, so my two or three minute quick spectrum really really looks like depleted uranium, but very very pure depleted uranium, very chemically pure. So uh, this is like heavily depleted. And if I'd had a better detector, the Polymaster is great, but it's not so good with some of the stuff down here, especially with no shielding. This thing was a heavy beta emitter, too, I think. I think it was a beta emitter. It didn't have a Geiger counter on me, and if I'd had a Geiger counter, I could have confirmed that. So there you go. Now I'm going to show you a, a quick zoom in of the actual area where I found it, because it wasn't exactly where it showed in the first picture. So let's, um, let's, let's get to that. Actually, here we go. Now look here. This is what I was originally showing you in the picture. See that black block and that... Black block does sort of remind me of uh, DU a little bit, except it's too dark. I think it's like foam or something. This is where I was when it was 20,000 counts per minute, but I moved down to here. See this pipe that I have that highlighted in red? Underneath that pipe, inside that pipe, around that pipe, near that pipe, somewhere in there is where I hit the 100,000 mark. And I didn't see anything else, but the um, the car was like honk and it was getting ready to leave, so I had to go. You got me in what it is. It's neat. This is the forward landing gear of an A6, uh, sorry, A6 intruder, of an A4 Skyhawk. So this is an old retired airplane, by the way, too. So this was on a museum piece. There's nothing wrong with me showing this, but neat. This stuff's all around, so just keep in mind, it ain't going to hurt you. I mean, I wouldn't go up there and lick it, but it's it just being in a museum piece, it's not going to hurt you. You, you, you. I can't imagine how you could be harmed by it unless you, like, 
stuck your head up against it for like a week or a month or a year or something, and even then it wouldn't actually hurt you. It would just probably raise your statistical chance of cancer a little bit. And if you smoke cigarettes, then, well, you're already doing that anyway. I mean, this thing kills me. People who, who, who go on about the statistical increase of cancer and smoke cigarettes. I'm not talking about everybody else. I'm talking about the ones that smoke the cigarettes because that's what the cigarettes do. In fact, the same material. But So there you go. Um, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and uh, bye-bye.